Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and proceed with our debate on our clerk auditor position. Um, let me indicate that our moderator for this segment will be Joe Christensen, who is the deputy state auditor. So it's a real opportunity to, be, to have someone with us that is very knowledgeable and who is a practicing Thank professional you. in a very demanding field. Let me tell you just a little bit about Mr. Christensen. His residence is in West Jordan. Um, he's earned a master's degree in accounting from Brigham Young University. He began his career as a certified public accountant. He has served in the state auditor's office for 20 years, and um, he has served as the state deputy auditor for the last four years. So again, a real opportunity to have someone who understands the demands of this position and someone who has uh, been a leader in that area himself. Um, the assistant moderator for this debate will be Ivan Keller, and I'll turn the time now to Mr. Joe Christensen. Mr. Christensen. Thank you. Uh, we're going to try to liven this uh, discussion up a little bit. We're going to throw out a few debits and credits for you to enjoy, <laughs> but uh, we appreciate this opportunity to talk to you. We're going to start uh, with a brief introduction of two minutes each. Uh, <coughs> Just an opening statement by uh, Brian uh, Thompson, who will be followed by Kerry O'Connell. Okay. Well, I appreciate the opportunity I have to uh, be here today, and I appreciate each one of you for taking the time, especially with the storms we've had the last few days on such a beautiful uh, afternoon to, to be indoors here and uh, taking the opportunity to learn more about the process. As was mentioned, my name is Brian Thompson, and I am a Republican Party candidate for Utah County Clerk Auditor. This is a position that is very important in county government. It is essentially the backbone of the financial, op financial uh, operations and uh, clerical functions that take place in the county. But it doesn't get a lot of notoriety. It's not uh, a position that gets the uh, press that the county commission, county attorney races, or even our congressional races get. But it's important, and who is the clerk auditor is important. I believe that I have the leadership skills the management experience, and the education necessary to be your Utah County Clerk Auditor. This is an open seat. Neither Mr. McConnell nor I are the current Utah County Clerk Auditor. And so we're both presenting our credentials to you. And through the course of this debate and uh, through the, this time, I hope to show you how I have the experience that will bring the leadership and accountability that is so important to this, um, this uh, multifaceted office. I currently work in the private sector. I am a business manager and have been for some 20 plus years. And I have the opportunity to oversee budgets, to do project management, and to work with uh, individuals in supervi supervisory roles, and to motivate people, help to get the best out of them. But most importantly, I think I bring to this uh, position the private sector best practices. In other words, the opportunity not just to work harder, but to work smarter to think outside of the box so that we can truly bring efficiency to county government. For efficiency equals decreased cost, decreased cost equals saving taxpayers dollars. And that's what we want to do is keep more money in your pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. My name is Kerry McConnell. I'm also a Republican candidate for the Office of Clerk Auditor. I find it interesting uh, that uh, while well, the crowd really did thin out, <laughs> I think the Daily Herald called this one of the most obscure positions in county government. But I, I agree with uh, what Mr. Mr. Thompson has stated, that there, it is a very important function. The clerk and the auditor is a, is a dual office with statutory requirements in both offices. I've been at uh, the county in the clerk auditor's office for more than six years. Initially, I was hired as a financial analyst in the auditor's office. And just early in 05, uh, there was some restructuring done in the office. Currently, I, I supervise uh, the clerk side, and I still have and maintain uh, my auditor functions. So I, uh, one thing that I think that I bring here to this office is experience within the office and with the county. Uh, the county is its own um, Let's say it's its own little, uh, <laughs> its own little, uh, it is its own form of government, but it's got its own little quirks. 
recently, uh, the office uh, uh, instituted a new accounting system, which I was part of uh, and did a number of tests on the auditor side. Uh, I, I do bring with, uh, with me uh, some accounting. Uh, I bring an accounting degree with accounting experience. I did do uh, work for uh, a number of firms prior to coming to the county, so I bring with me an accounting background. Uh, it was very uh, helpful for me and for the office uh, bringing this system up online. Uh, at that time, I was doing a number of things for the auditor side, and I was actually helping um, with the purchasing, and so it was very instrumental with, for me. Uh, myself, uh, I will continue to uh, do the things in the office that I know that needs to be done. Uh, and, and I think probably we'll talk more about what things that I want to bring to the office. But uh, I do thank you for your time here for the next 20 minutes. Thank you. Our next question will begin with Mr. McConnell and ask him to describe the job description uh, that's involved with this position and the, a list of responsibilities that this elected position holds. We'll have one minute. Man, I better talk fast. That's, that's a quick time. It's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a dual function. Really, the clerk, let's talk about the clerk really quick. Major responsibility as a clerk is marriage license. Issuing the marriage license uh, is an acceptance facility for passport applications. But the main function of the clerk is the elections. On the auditor side, a number of things on the auditor side may not be as visual as the clerk side. I think uh, the auditor does a uh, number of things, countywide budget, all the accounting for uh, the county accounts receivable payable payroll is ran through the auditor's office uh, tax administration is a big part uh, of, of my job and part of the auditor's office the board of equalization where you as a taxpayer can come in and contest the value of your property is run through the auditor's office it's the board of equalization the abatement uh, program uh, which is tax relief program for people on living on fixed income on a, over 65, and there's a number of other programs. Veterans, blind abatement, runs through the auditor's office, and I oversee that. The job description uh, is to maintain and, and, and supervise these functions that they, that they uh, are met, uh, statutory requirements, and county policy as well. So this individual would oversee the, uh, both offices. Thanks. Okay. Well, Mr. McConnell did an excellent job of reviewing the different responsibilities of this office, and as you can see, it's multifaceted. So what it gets down to is, in these various functions, what do we need to oversee those as a department head and carry forth things and provide the leadership necessary to carry out these functions? Let me talk about the budget, for example. As the clerk auditor, the budget is one of the most important responsibilities in that office as an information agent to the other department heads and the county commissioners. As the clerk auditor in this uh, regard, what that means is that we provide the information that's necessary and needed to make good informed decisions because ultimately it's the commissioners that set the policy and uh, vote accordingly. I've heard it said that with good information, good decisions can be made. So I emphasize that. On the clerk side, it is really important to have the strong foresight and skills to look at where we're going with our elections process, the growth in this county, and to have the processes in place to handle the increased growth as Utah County grows. So there are multifaceted functions in this office. We need a strong department head that will lead out, be a visible upfront leader, and that will take the initiatives forward to keep this office running smooth and efficiently. Thank you. Our next question uh, is somewhat related to things you've, you've covered. We'll take another minute apiece, starting with Mr. Mr. Thompson, and, and explain the experience and qualifications you have that make you the best qualified for those functions you've described. Okay. Well, as uh, Mr. Connell uh, also has an accounting degree, so do I. And uh, that's where my uh, educational background in addition, I felt that it is important to be on the cutting edge and to learn things and to stay abreast of changes in the industry. For that reason, I have memberships in several professional societies as it relates to accounting, the Institute of Management Account Accountants, which is a position that uh, is, uh, or an organization that is strictly related with uh, the management accounting uh, practices and, 
in dealing with situations. I also am a member of the Operational and Management Society of America with the acronym of APEX, and because of my current uh, uh, role in the private sector in quality assurance, I belong to the American Society of Quality. All these things give me the background and experience of doing things better, um, looking for opportunities to think outside of the box, and bringing a different viewpoint to county government. That outside look where we uh, go ahead and look for opportunities to make things run a lot more efficiently and uh, continue to handle the growth that will be coming to the county. I think my experience of qualifications um, bring, bring, uh, bring something to the table. Uh, yes, I, like I said, we both have an accounting degree. I have worked in the accounting field. I was an, uh, the accountant for an engineering firm prior, prior to coming to the county. I understand uh, systems. Uh, I was, like I said before, I was uh, instrumental in, in introducing a new system to the county. I understand the accounting functions. Some of the things that I've gathered over the last six plus years uh, qualify for me for the position as well. Part of my current duties and, and have been the duties of actually calculating the rates, uh, tax rates for cities and all entities. And I've built up quite a, a relationship with not only the State Tax Commission, with cities and with uh, school district administrators. And I thought, you know, that's only a one time each year that we actually calculate the rate, but how many times a year I talk to these individuals about a number of things, whether it is about tax rate, whether it's about value issues, board vehicleization issues, and election issues. A lot of these city administrators are city recorders as well. So I have a relationship built with these individuals uh, through both the clerk and the auditor side. Uh, the other qualifications uh, that I think that well, I hope that we'll talk about is on the election side and, and uh, in, very uh, instrumental in, in bringing along the, uh, the electronic voting machines and understanding those and we're actually getting ready to deploy those for this primary as well. So I hope that we have, get, have a moment to talk about that. Next question, uh, again one minute uh, a piece and we'll start with Mr. McConnell. What, how will the citizens best be able to evaluate your performance in these response buildings? Well, I've always said if you keep your name out of the paper, <laughs> you, you must be, uh, must be keeping, uh, doing something right. How, how will the citizens actually perform or rate the performance? Uh, well, and let's just take it here at the end of this month. Let's see how well the election goes off. New electronic voting mach machines, uh, I, I think it's, it's going to actually be somewhat uh, new, to, new to the most people. But I think you vote on it once, you'll see how comfortable that is. I certainly hope that we've trained the election judges and the poll workers to, to pull off this. I know that they're working with new equipment, new machines, same process though. You as a voter will present yourself in the same manner. You'll actually get a voter access card, very similar to, to the old process, and you will actually vote on the machines themselves. If we can pull this off, not only Utah County, but the other 28 counties pull this election off uh, without any, any, any mistakes, or, I think that that one, uh, that there, there will be a great uh, bonus for the current clerk auditor to perform and actually have the citizens rate uh, the, him, the current clerk auditor, as a, as a success. I think future elections as well is very, uh, very important. Uh, we've got another one coming up in November, and then uh, we'll see about city and municipal elections, county running those, but we'll see you again another two years. In regards to this office, I would hope that uh, people would evaluate my performance should I be elected and gain the trust of the people by their positive experience with this office. And by positive experience, what I mean is that as people contact the office and interact with that office, they have a good experience. Their needs are met. The staff is supportive. And as the uh, clerk auditor, ultimately, as the department head, I would have the accountability and the responsibility. So if people are coming to that office and they aren't having a good experience, then that means that I haven't done my job in training people or providing the resources or the tools necessary for this office to function. So I'd say that uh, a good uh, feedback on 
my performance would be in relationship to the type of experience people are having because if they aren't having a good experience, I haven't done my job. And then uh, as far as, uh, I, I agree with what Mr. McConnell's saying uh, as far as staying out of the paper, but I think that's one of the things that uh, has hurt this office is that it hasn't got the exposure it needs to. And another one of my visions and things that I think will make this office a, an important office is to put the positive things in the paper and get out there and let people know what this office can do. Get people involved, encourage them to be involved as election judges and do those positive things and utilize the press to talk about the good things that we can do as a county and as a citizenry to uh, support this office and move county government forward. Uh, another question related to the electronic voting machines, those have been a big concern in the media. Uh, what concerns do you have related to those and what are your plans to resolve those concerns? We'll start with Mr. Thompson for one minute. Well, first of all, uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, uh, the uh, clerk down in Emory County, Bruce Funk. And uh, he actually uh, raised some concerns and for those, whether you're aware or not, uh, the state made the choice with input from the different counties on the type of voting uh, apparatus that we would have to meet the uh, Help America Vote Act, uh, uh, fulfill the requirements that we have uh, with that act. And we chose these electronic voting machines as a state. Mr. Funk in Emory County raised some concerns, concerns about uh, uh, these machines and if they would uh, properly uh, tabulate the vote and different things. Unfortunately, that got really tried in the press a little bit prematurely, in my opinion, in that there were other resources he could have tapped into, gone to the state, and uh, done some different things, and pulled in all those resources. Unfortunately, I guess he hired an outside group, and they broke into the machines, which voided the warranty and caused some problems there. Those are concerns that we have of proper systems, but we need to utilize the appropriate systems that are in place to check that and make sure that these machines work. And that's what I would do is encourage that we follow the proper channels and uh, make sure that the, these machines have integrity through all the resources provided. Then if it doesn't look like it's appropriate, then definitely raise the red flag at that point. Uh, well, this is a great question because I've actually, um, I've touched a number of these, uh, whether it be unloading, uh, uh, unpackaging and testing these. Actually, the state of Utah, let me make one correction, though, the state elections office through the lieutenant governor's office and the state purchasing department actually bid this project out. There was no input from the counties. Uh, they went through a selection process and a committee, uh, state elections office and the lieutenant governor's office selected the, the, the vendor. Uh, the counties had the opportunity to, to, um, to, to buy into to, to the, uh, to, to, to the vendor that they selected which was Diebold, and all 29 counties ultimately did. 27 of them actually using the, the electronic touch screens or the DREs. The other two counties were already running optical scan ballots. Uh, my concerns, uh, and they're very few to be honest with you, I think it comes down to as the election judge has been properly trained, will they be able to set the machines up at seven o'clock and have them functional and working? Uh, that, I think that will be the concern that the elections office and the clerk should have is, have they been trained properly? Can they get the machine up and running and uh, let the voter actually uh, vote on the machines? They need to be set up. Uh, I think delivery of the, uh, of the equipment at the end of the night, I certainly hope that that will not be a, a breakdown in the system as well. No longer will they bring the machines back, but the, what they're responsible, their responsibilities are is to bring the memory card back to the county clerk at the end of the night. Thank you. That's the end of our questions. So we'll have two minutes apiece to give a closing statement. And we'll start with Mr. McConnell. Thanks. You know, I think we uh, tried to touch on a few things here, uh, especially experience, uh, qualifications of an individual, and maybe knowledge of the office. I think it's important for the voter to understand and will the voter value experience from within? Uh, I understand the office was hired on the auditor side, still do a number of things on the auditor side, uh, and, and, and then supervises the clerk side. It has been said that, uh, you know, that I may only know half of the job. Well, I, I think that more than half of the job is, is, is much better than, than knowing none of the job. 
Sure, I can actually read something off online and find out what the duties and the responsibilities of the current clerk auditor is, but I actually understand and I do a number of those functions. Uh, may, uh, I think the clerk is actually going to be uh, in, in the paper a lot, especially in this uh, election year, not only in the primary but in the general election, and I certainly hope that, the, that it is positive. The, election, the elections here, uh, the number of things that these electronic machines work uh, is being done now. Uh, usually uh, on the old machines, the work almost come after the votes came in. But here, the machines need to actually go through a logic and accuracy test. Memory cards need to be programmed with the correct ballot. That work is actually being done. And does the public have any idea of what goes on? No. They'll actually show up to the voting machine and have a good experience and vote on the machine. And I, and I certainly hope that they will tell others about it. One thing that I wish that we would have maybe talked about, and I think I'll plug, take this time to plug it right now, is the state of Utah and the legislature changed the law. You can actually early vote. This is something new here in, in Utah. Lex, uh, you can go and vote here in Utah County at uh, lower level, uh, nine, room 900 of the County Administration Building, Tuesday the 13th through Friday the 23rd. It's called early voting, and I certainly hope that that early voting will catch on and help alleviate the growth in Utah County. My name is Kerry McConnell, and I'm running for Clerk Goddard. Thank you. I um, stand corrected as far as the input that uh, Mr. McConnell talked about uh, the counties didn't get an, enough input. I know they got some. They didn't get enough input in the process. But what I can bring to this that uh, would overcome that is over my years and my involvement in the Republican Party as your party treasurer here in Utah County, as a current member of the Utah County Party Audit Committee, I've interacted with our elected officials. I know most of them. Many of them are endorsing me and supporting me in this. So I have the sway in the poll to go ahead and make sure that our county has a greater voice on Capitol Hill than Salt Lake. And I think that's something that I bring uh, to, the, to the table. Also, just because you work in a clerical position or an office doesn't necessarily mean you're the right person to head that office up and be the leader there. And that's why I want to talk about experience for a minute. I don't diminish Mr. McConnell's experience one bit. In fact, I, I've heard nothing but good about his work ethic and what a hard worker he is. But what this office needs and what it's lacked under the last clerk auditor over the last four years is the leadership. Someone that will lead out and be the spokesman with the public. Someone that will be there and solve problems when they arise. Someone that will be accountable and stand up and when things go wrong, take responsibility and not just pass it off onto the staff and others. There is a great staff in that office. Mr. McConnell is one of those. These are good people. They do their job, but they need a strong leader. I bring 20 plus years of management experience to this position, and that's what it takes in this office is someone that's there that can manage, can lead out, can motivate people, and do the things necessary to move this forward. There's a great staff, and with the right leader and spokesman for them, then we can change and we can overcome the problems that have occurred in the past. I bring that to the table. I understand the experience. I do the same things in the private sector that's done in that office, just under a different title. And I want to be your clerk auditor so that I can bring the accountability, the leadership, and management back to this office that it so desperately needs. Thank you. I wish to thank both of our candidates, and we'll turn the time back over to Citizens Research. Thank you. Gentlemen, if I could have you stay on the, on the dais for just a few moments. A couple of important pieces of information about this race. Uh, first of all, the primary will determine who will become the new office holder here. There is no one that has filed for this position from another party. So no one else on the ballot in November except whoever comes through the Republican primary. So this becomes a very important race that will be decided on June 27th. I wanted to draw that to your attention. And also, again, no incumbent in this race, both of these gentlemen challenging for this position. We were able to finish just a little bit ahead of schedule and thought that if there was anyone in the audience that wanted to propose a question, we probably had time to entertain that before we moved on to our county commission presentation. Any questions? Ma'am. Yeah. 
So a question about the voting machines. I don't know that and many of you were able to hear that. Gentlemen, we'll just give you a quick minute each to address that question. And if one of you would restate that, so because we're televising it on the cable channel, okay. we'd like the audience to be able to capture that. Well, just real quickly, and I'll actually defer uh, to Mr. McConnell as far as the technicalities of how these machines work. But uh, is the question, do you personally want some type of paper trail, or just is it recorded somewhere So the question is, uh, how are they recorded, the, these results and that? From what I know, and Mr. McConnell can go ahead and uh, provide more detail, is in addition to that paper audit that is there, there's also the vote is recorded on a memory card, which is then downloaded into the counting system. So there's redundancy there that uh, goes ahead and... If need, needs be. In fact, there's actually a means where one of those records is stored and set aside and uh, looked at if needs be. Uh, Kerry would well, know more. Well, and, and, and yes, and, and the question is how is that stored? Actually, there's three storage places. There is a PCMI MC, uh, MCI card, which is a hard memory card that the judge is responsible to put in that morning. They will run a zero tape to verify, and two judges or poll workers will sign off that that card has zero votes on it. That also has the ballot formats on. During the day, the votes are recorded on the memory card. There is flash memory in the machine itself, and then that paper, that paper trail. That state legislature uh, uh, mandated a, what do they call a voter verifiable paper trail. You will actually be able to see that vote. It should match up to what was actually on the screen, should be right there on the, on, on the printer. That's why it's under glass. Because when you hit cast ballot or reject the ballot, that will roll up into the canister. The canister is actually part of the record. It is maintained for 22 months along with the memory card. Yes, there is a hard copy. The whole purpose of the bill was, will the public actually trust the votes being cast on a memory card versus hard copy? Could the hard copy be read if needed? Well, it could. It would be a very laborious process, but it could be read. You will, be, you will leave the poll with nothing, like you normally have in the past. On the old punch card, you punch the card, put it in a secrecy sleeve, and drop it down into a ballot box. This is initially the same thing. You want to verify what's on the screen versus, and what's on the paper prior to casting the ballot. You, you, you as a voter should be able to catch that, certainly. Did I mark candidate, candidate, proposition, proposition? Is it the same on the paper trail prior to casting the ballot? You're right. Okay, thank you very much. And gentlemen, thank you again for being willing to entertain that extra question. And thank you to our moderator, Mr. Joe Christensen. We're now ready to move to our segment on the county commission. We have two candidates, of course, involved in this primary. We have the incumbent, Jerry Grover, and we have the challenger, Gary Anderson. Mr. Grover is unable to be with us this afternoon, and so he has asked Keith Grover to present a statement in his behalf, and I would like to invite Mr. Grover to come forward now and to make that presentation again as he's coming forward. This is the county commission race, seat A, incumbent Jerry Grover versus challenger Gary Anderson. Uh, Mr. Grover, welcome, and we're ready for your statement. Good afternoon. I am Keith Grover, brother of Commissioner Jerry Grover, and I'm here to represent him. Commissioner Grover apologized that he is unable to attend this Meet the Candidate event, as he has had a prior commitment assisting National Guard military intelligence units in their exercises today. Actually, he was recruited by the National Guard to play the role of a local elected Iraqi official 
who will be subjected to various interrogations all day today. So it may be, in fact, similar to being on the campaign trail. <laughs> These are his words. He asked me that all questions can be directed to him by email or phone, if you'd like, and the information is on his flyer. I would just like to hi highlight a few areas with Commissioner Grover's campaign here today. Commissioner Grover brings critical qualifications to the job, especially in this time of accelerated growth in Utah County. Unlike many elected positions, a significant part of a commissioner's job is as an administrator. Under Utah County's form of government, there is no county manager, and all responsibilities rest with the county commissioners. The commissioners are responsible for all personnel actions, establishing budgets, supervising all departments, reviewing and approving all contracts, and authorizing all expenditures, among other administrative responsibilities. Commissioner Grover is uniquely qualified for the position of county commissioner. Commissioner Grover is a licensed professional civil engineer with the state of Utah. He's also a licensed professional geologist with the state of Utah. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from BYU in Geological Engineering and a Master of Civil Engineering degree from the University of Utah. Prior to his initial election, he worked as a pri in the private sector for Geneva Steel, Mercedes-Benz in China, General Instrument, and IBM. He has also successfully owned and operated some small businesses. He has served as an adjunct professor at UVSC, teaching chemistry and environmental law. Regarding property tax, Commissioner Grover has committed to hold the line on taxes. While other levies on your tax notice may have gone up, the Utah County levy ha has dropped 37% since Commissioner Grover took office. And the county now has the lowest tax rate of the urban counties in Utah, and has one of the lowest certified tax rates of all counties in Utah. He promises to continue my aggressive approach in managing the taxpayers' monies and continue to have the county le tax levy drop. Prepared fat food or the restaurant tax. The sales tax that applies to prepared food sales at restaurants is set annually by the county commission and used to be set at 1%. Over Commissioner Grover's last term, this tax has been cut by 30%, largely due to his continued efforts. The tax was initially authorized by the citizens through a ballot measure in the early 90s, specifically for the David O. McKay Special Events Center and the regional county parks. He stuck to the original intent as expressed by the voters and he is committed by to cutting the tax an additional 10% over his next term. Commissioner Grover has been very effective in working with other entities to establish cost-effective regional services. Commissioner Grover thanks the many city council persons and local, and local elected officials who have volunteered to help on his campaign. Commissioner Grover believes that the true measures of cooperation is not a bunch of rhetoric or endorsements, but in actual verifiable accomplishments. Commissioner Grover has been a driving force behind the following regional projects. Joint construction of South End Connector Roads in the county. Joint construction and management of two regional animal shelters. Construction of the 800 megahertz radio trunking system allowing all cities to, commu to communicate with each other. Effective operation of regional cities sewage treatment plant. Effective operation of regional cities refuse transfer station. Maintenance and expansion of the countywide bomb and demolition team entered into over 85 contracts for cooperation with municipalities for a variety of services. Funded 100% of local match for regional transit study in conjunction with cities and MAG. Combined dispatch center for 17 of the 23 cities. Fiber optics backbone that has linked principal front cities together. Regional parks in adjacent to cities free to city residents. Regional geological hazard maps for use by the cities. Regional aerial photography with cost sharing agreements with the cities. Regional flood control and stormwater permits for protection of cities. And joint ordinance development and implementation of the EASY program to stop sale of cigarettes to underage buyers. Independent evaluations of, Count of Commissioner Grover and Utah County include the Utah, the Utah Taxpayers Association. Commissioner Grover received the 2005 Excellence in Public Service Award from the Utah Taxpayers Association. Quoting from their May 2005 newsletter, given the happenings in other of Utah's urban counties, the lean, mean approach to taxes and spending by the Utah County Commission is a breath of fresh air. For years, Utah County government has been viewed as the most efficient urban county in Utah and one of the most efficient in the nation. The association noted that Utah County has kept costs low by employing zero-based budgeting, privatizing government services, applying business principles to government, and requiring each department to operate independently as a separate enterprise. Additional comments from Moody's Investor Service and Standards and Poor's. 
Since Commissioner Grover took office as a part of an independent evaluation of Utah County by Wall Street, by Wall Street rating firms Moody's Investor Service, increased Utah County's financial rating to AA and Standard & Poor's increased its rating to an AAA2, both the highest ratings available to a county of our size. Moody's commented that Utah County had soundly managed finances and was, quote, well below its peers in total tax rate, unquote, in a national press release. Standards and Poor's in their national press release based the rationale in part on a, quote, very good financial performance with significantly improved rate reserve levels since the mid-1990s and a well-developed five-year capital plan that is substantially cash-funded, close quote. Commissioner Grover, thanks, for your, thanks you for your desire to exercise your right, wrote, your right to vote and would appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Keith Grover, in behalf of Commissioner Gary Grover. And now um, let me introduce Mr. Gary Anderson. Good. Thank you for putting that in front of me so I know who I am. The, these days, I hardly do. Uh, I appreciate your staying. The uh, clerk auditor's families got up and left, and it uh, cut, our, cut our audience in half. Uh, my wife says, we're all the people who don't have a life on a beautiful Saturday afternoon sitting here listening to politicians, but you are the people, and I appreciate you being here because you're interested in this race and you're interested in what's going on. I appreciate Raylene and Jessica uh, and all of those who have put this on. Uh, Raylene, I first met Raylene Ireland when she was chairman of the Utah County Republican Party back in 1983. She was 13 and I was 14, and uh, I was running for her office and she was the chairman of the party, and uh, I appreciate all the good work she does. This, um, I think this county commission race is probably the most important county commission race in the last 20 years and probably in the next 20 years. Now the reason I say that is because this is going to determine the way, which direction county government goes. Uh, Jerry Grover and I are, uh, are both redneck conservative Republicans. Nobody's going to raise taxes. Nobody's going to do anything uh, against the Republican bylaws or constitution or anything of that nature. We're both very conservative and we're both proud of that. Uh, we both have beautiful wives. In fact, my wife is here. Please stand up. And I think Jerry's wife is here. Please stand up too. They're both here. And so uh, we both are very, very lucky men. I think we both lied to our wives to get beautiful wives, uh, tell them we were going to be honest politicians or rich lawyers or something like that. I am a lawyer by, uh, by profession. I've been practicing for 30 years. I started out in the county attorney's office. I was a deputy county attorney, advised the uh, elected officials and the department heads. I uh, moved over after a couple of years to be a major felony prosecutor. I prosecuted everything from uh, DUIs to murder trials. I'm a trial lawyer. Uh, I was elected to the county commission in 1983 and as a young man served there for six years. Back then you had a two-year term and a four-year term and I served for two terms and then retired. I went back into the practice of law and did trial work. Uh, for the last eight or nine years, I've had a couple of contracts with the juvenile court where I do family preservation work, and I found that quite rewarding. Um, people ask me why I am back in this race after 20 years, and I tell them the following. Uh, you know, after you get out, if you, if you run for office and you finish office, People come to you all the time and say, when are you going to get back in? When do you get back in? Some of those are sincere. Some are just flattering you. This year, I had some mayors who are very good friends and some, uh, the sheriff and some of his people come to me and say, we need some help. We are not getting the support from the county commission and from the current incumbent that we need. And uh, I, we need you to run. And I indicated, been there, done that. I've got the T-shirt. They said, get, let us give you a presentation. So over a couple of days, they presented the problems. And as I looked at those problems, uh, some of which I knew existed and some of which I didn't know existed, I, I saw that my strengths and my experiences and my, um, my, my ability lent itself to solving those problems, to helping solve those problems. One of the problems being that uh, the county commission is not working with the mayors. Uh, they say they are, but they are not. I want you to ask any mayor, all of you know mayors, ask them. The, uh, the word that's going around, or the word that is used to me, the, 
they say we're tearing our hair out. We can't get them to talk to us. We can't get them to, to not all the county commissioners, but uh, we can't get them to cooperate with us. That is the reason we're having, one of the big reasons we're having transportation problems. I think transportation is the issue in this race. There are a lot of issues, but the issue is transportation. Utah County has the, the president of the Senate living in this county. We've got three of the four top uh, members of the House of Representatives living in this county. We've got great senators. We've got active congressmen. We've got great mayors. The missing ingredient, if you talk to all of those people and you talk to UDOT, is the county commission. We need leadership. Those monies have been allocated to Utah County. They're going north. They're going to, you look at your uh, gas tax, and we get the lowest percentage of any, gas ta of any county around for the gas tax. The money's going north. It's been promised to us for 10 years, and we're not getting it. All you have to do, I, all you have to do is get on that Lehigh Main Street and drive to Eagle Mountain around 5 or 6 o'clock at night, or go to Force South in Springville and try to drive from the freeway into Springville. Uh, you can't do it. I was out in Eagle Mountain Thursday, and uh, we drove out there about 5.30. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. And you cannot widen Main Street in Lehigh. You can't do it. There are historical buildings there. They need a new road. That needs to happen. People have been talking about it for 10 years. We need to get it hap to happen. And the way it happens is leadership. You bring people together. You bring people to the table. You quit fighting. You quit worrying about who's going to get the credit, and you get it done. The money is there. The, the technology certainly is there, and the will is there. What you need is leadership. Same thing with, um, with mass transit. Depending on which poll you listen to, 75 to 84 percent of the people in Utah County want commuter rail or light rail. Commissioners won't put it on the ballot. They blame the legislature and say they told us not to do that because they were going to provide those things. We need that issue on the ballot. We are in danger of losing the tracking agreements we've got with Union Pacific. Un UP has given us these tracking agreements, and they said, you, you're not acting on it. We're going to pull them. We've got, um, we've got transportation problems. Another problem we've got is uh, law enforcement. The sheriff came to me, who endorses me, by the way, came to me and said, uh, I need some help. I'm not getting the help from the county commission. Let me give you an example. In 1983, or 2003, um, the sheriff came to the county commission and said, we cannot keep our canyon safe. We do not have canyon patrols. We have uh, the people from Salt Lake Canyon and Davis County, uh, those canyons have come down to our canyons and invaded them because they have canyon patrols and we don't. Give us four five-man teams enforcement teams and they can be paid they will pay for themselves that law was changed so that you could take it out of the general fund and it would be paid for give us four or five man teams one each year over a period of years and we'll take back our canyons it'll be safe for our people to go up in the canyons talk about methamphetamine uh, Spanish Fork Canyon is a major corridor for methamphetamine and our sheriffs can't patrol it they were given the first the first um, team Gary Herbert then went to be lieutenant governor. They haven't gotten one since. They've been promised, they haven't gotten one since. When our deputies go into those canyons, they go in alone to a rave party or a drug party, all of those menacing things that go on in that canyon, they are out of radio contact. They are naked up there, alone, in those parties with people who are on drugs or drinking or anything else. It'd take a million bucks to put booster stations in all of those canyons. It'd be, the cost would be defrayed by microwave uh, companies and other cell phone companies and things like that. We need to protect our people. That needs to happen. Now, you say all those things cost money. Taxes do not need to be raised. The big difference between uh, my opponent and me is our priorities in government. My first priorities are transportation, law enforcement, senior citizens, economic development. Uh, they're very proud of the fact that they have uh, privatized economic development in Utah County and they've got a $60,000 contract. We've got a half a million people in this, co this county. $60,000 private contract for economic development. And it's the same vendor, the same contractor that does it for Salt Lake County. Who do you think gets more attention, Utah County or Salt Lake County? We're in competition with those people. We need to bring back economic development. We need to bring back the uh, money that was allocated for the senior citizens. MAG has become an issue in this campaign. It shouldn't be an issue, but the, the sentiment behind what happened in MAG is an issue, and that is that our county commissioners withdrew from the senior services portion of Mountain Lands Association of Governments. 
and they had $800,000 allocated for senior citizens. We don't have, we don't have uh, Meals on Wheels routes in the north end of the county. That money was, was targeted for that. They lost that fight, as you know, and I don't want to get into that. They lost that fight with the state, and when they did, they said, we're not going to give you the $800,000. We've already spent it. We've given it to the sheriff. You talk to the sheriff, and the sheriff says, well, I didn't get any of that. And I invite you to talk to the sheriff. Talk to a sheriff. Talk to a deputy. Talk to a county employee. Talk to a mayor. Talk to a legislator. Don't believe what I say or what my opponents say. Talk to them who they want to work with. This county needs leadership. We have the best, the brightest, the most innovative people in the world living in this county, and we're not talking to them. There's, a, there's a, what I call an arrogance of isolation, and we cannot afford it. We are a great county. We need to remain a great county. We need to, um, we need to bring back economic development. We need to bring back senior services. We need to give the sheriff the uh, support he needs, and we need to build those roads. We need to build them. We need to quit talking about it and quit saying we can't do it because the legislature won't give it to us. We can't do it because it's not our jurisdiction. We can't do it because the mayors won't cooperate. We need to bring those people together. It can be done. When I was county commissioner, we had a problem with the road up Provo Canyon, had a two-lane death trap up there. And we had environmentalists on one side. We had W.W. Clyde and the property owners in Provo City and everybody else on the other side. They were fighting. They said it could never get done. I'm the one that put that Provo Canyon uh, committee together and we now have a highway up there and they're expanding it said we couldn't centralize uh, our we had uh, the state and the county had offices all over they were running offices all over the county they said we can't centralize those the the Provo City and the property owners and the county will never get together the state will never get together I, I was chairman of that municipal building authority we put it together and now you can go to one place and get your license plate you can get your shots you can pay your taxes you can do it all in one place same thing with the floods floods of 1983 we had Thistle up there we had UDOT saying one thing we had Spanish Fork saying another thing we had the county we had the state everybody was fighting we put those things together we brought them together and solved the problem that's what needs to happen we need leadership we need leadership. This county is a great county. We're in danger of becoming a second-class county. It can't happen. We need leadership. We can do better. We can do better. I'll listen to you. I'll listen to the mayors. I'll listen to the legislatures. I will not have that arrogance of isolation. So vote for Gary J. Anderson, and please, whoever you vote for, vote the 27th. We're just like the clerk auditor. There's no Democrat. Jerry and I scared them all off. But there's no Democrat in this race. <laughs> so vote the 27th or vote the, the, vote the 13th. Go down to the county building and, and early voting. So thank you very much.